Good Monday morning. Today is May 16th, halfway through the month, and we're on a new sheet. We finished one side. What was this? This was, oh, this was the first five months, four and a half, and now we're on the next four or five months. God, it's crazy how time flies. Okay, anyway. May 16th, give thanks unto the Lord, call upon his name, make known his deeds among the people, sing unto him, sing psalms unto him, talk ye of all his wondrous works. First Chronicles chapter 16 verses 8 and 9. Some 3,000 years ago, David pitched his tent and offered burnt sacrifices and peace offerings before God. Afterward, David blessed the people in the name of the Lord and fed them. He then delivered his first psalm of thanksgiving. His words echo down the centuries. O oh, give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good, for his mercy endureth forever. Today and always we acknowledge the Lord. We call upon his name in humility and thankfulness, and bear witness to the world of his goodness and mercy. We sing praises unto him for his bounteous love and inexhaustible <coughs> gospel. We offer our, our broken heart and contrite spirit as we come unto him and ac access the power of the infinite atonement. We talk of his wondrous works and show our gratitude by the way we live our lives. In every moment, let us give thanks unto the Lord. Okay, so this week we have jumped forward to Deuteronomy 6. So we left off in Numbers, I forget, 20, 23 and 24 was yesterday, and today is Deuteronomy 6. So we skipped a bunch, and this week we're going to be skipping a bunch as well. So we're doing Deuteronomy 6, 7, 8, then jumping to 15, then jumping to 18, then jumping to 29, then we do 30, and then 34. So we're just skipping around Deuteronomy, which I'm okay with. Because that's the important stuff. That's what they want us to learn. Um, so anyways, in 6, um, the Lord is is giving command. Um, he's, he's giving a refresher course to the children of Israel. He's, he's saying, um, what is he saying here? He's saying, now these are the commandments, the statutes, and the judgments which the Lord your God commanded to teach you, that ye might do them in the land whither ye go to, pos to possess it. Sorry. So basically he says, love the Lord your God and keep his commandments. And basically the whole time he's saying write it on your doorpost write it on your forehead you know write it in your heart write it on the gate you know he says um where is it it says uh, so he's saying um take it in to your heart that when the lord brings you in to the city that you did not build and to the houses that you did not fill and the wells you did not dig. Remember what I did for you and teach it to your children. He's kind of sick of their complaining and he's saying, listen up. This is what I want from you. This is what I expect from you. You better do it. So that's Deuteronomy 6. So there's a few things here that we have we have a quote from Joseph Smith. The building up of Zion is a cause that has interested the people of God in every age. It is a theme upon which prophets, priests, and kings have dwelt with particular delight. They have looked forward with joyful anticipation to the day in which we live and fired with heavenly and joyful and joyful. Fired with heavenly and joyful anticipation, they have sung 
and written and prophesied of this our day, but they died without the sight. We are the favored people that God has made choice, choice of to bring about in the latter day glory. I'm having issues reading today. I'm sorry. Okay. Um, so there's just like an overview for six saying a preview of principles for righteous living. With salvation at stake, let us make every needful preparation in order to create a spiritual environment, cultivate a righteous walk, and assure that our hearts and minds are set upon the Lord and his goodness so that we keep his commandments. When we forget to recognize the hand of God in all things and instead take credit for our own prosperity, then surely the days of our security are shortened and destruction is at the door. With so much baseness rampant in the world, it is imperative that we beware of negative influences and misguided peer pressures. It is imperative that we elevate our minds to God through edifying expressions of praise and celebration, songs of glory, language of praise, poetry of honor, sayings of truth, artwork of beauty and dignity, all these reminders of our divine heritage and our noble birthright. Um, I think that's basically just saying that um, don't get easy uh, in the way. What is that scripture? They stumble because of the easiness of the way. Something, I mean, the serpent on the, on the brass serpent on the pole. We just read about that. Um, it's saying just because you're blessed doesn't mean you need to forget how blessed you are. Um, just because... I got the UPS store the most ready of any UPS store was for a remodel, the construction guy said. That's not me. The Lord gave me that ability. The Lord blessed me to get that done so that I could sleep and have some peace and not stress about it. You know, it wasn't me. It was him blessing me. Um, all right. So then it talks about remember and keep your covenants. Fear God and keep his commandments. Moses provided for Israel his final instructions, his last sermon. He memorialized the pattern of godly living that will edify and save Israel. Within Moses' address lies this, the counsel that each of us must take into our hearts. We must fear God in that we keep his commandments and honor the covenant promises. We must show our love for God through devotion and obedience. We must constantly remind ourselves to have an eye single to the glory of God. We must teach our children these things diligently. It is interesting that all the prophets teach the same doctrine. They all speak of the same God. They teach of the goodness of God, our Savior Jesus Christ, life-saving doctrine, principles, commandments, and covenants and the importance of these truths being given to our families. With salvation at stake, every needful preparation must be made to create a spiritual environment, cultivate a righteous walk, and assure that our hearts and minds are set upon the Lord and his goodness in order that we keep his commandments. Um, I don't know how many of you watched the young adult devotional yesterday, last night, um, with... President Nelson and his wife, Wendy. It was very good. And it, I, it was very interesting that they said, well, Wendy specifically said that if you ask yourself this one question, your anxiety, your depression, all that stuff will just kind of take care of itself. And the question was, what would a holy person do? She said, well, it was an experiment that she tried with 30 young adults, single and married. And she said, in one situation a day for three days, ask yourself, what would a holy person do? And as in certain situations, they asked themselves this question. Things kind of took care of themselves. You know, would a holy person watch this? Would a holy person react this way? Would a holy person spend their time on this app or so on and so forth? And I find it fascinating 
or kind of like a truth I always knew that when you keep the commandments or you know your divine identity, these, these cares, these worries, these superficial problems that you have in the world just kind of get taken care of or, or go away, you know? So I liked that about the devotional last night. Also, um, President Nelson spoke about our divine identity, having a, uh, knowing the truth about where we come from, who we are, and uh, it's just tying in to my study of the plan of salvation, which, you know, I don't know. It's just, you know, everything just comes together so neatly and nicely. And I love it when that happens. Okay. So, um, in verses 6 through 9, it talks about frontlets. You're supposed to write, um, to love the Lord thy God. You're supposed to write it on your frontlets, whatever that may be. And it's going to talk about it here. Um... Parental instruction in gospel living is essential in the development and upbringing of children. Loving reminders are encouragement. Loving reminders and encouragement are indispensable. The frontlets or phylacteries used in earlier times were small strips of parchment upon which key scriptures were written. These memory strips were attached to small leather holders and worn around the arm or forehead as a demonstration of faithfulness. Somewhat in the same spirit, young people today wear their CTR rings to remind them to choose the right. The scriptures teach the principle of remembering again and again. The word remember, in its various forms, is used more than 550 verses. Remembering is a dynamic spiritual process of bringing important spiritual truths to mind on the continual basis in order to cultivate a godly walk and conversion. To remember is to align oneself with the will of God in order to become, on a daily basis, more and more like Him. Thoughts lead to action, thus remembering in a faithful and obedient way leads to living in a faithful and obedient way. President Spencer W. Kimball stated, when you look in the dictionary for the most important word, do you know what it is? Remember is the word. All right. So that was a lot today, but it was good. I think it was good. Um, yes, remember who you are and what you stand for, as Dad used to say. All right. The 16th. This is from the Liturgy of the Abyssinian Jacobites. Holy God, holy and mighty, holy living and immortal, who didst raise from the dead on the third day, and didst ascend with glory into heaven, and sit down at the right hand of the Father, and shalt come again with glory to judge the quick and the dead, have mercy upon us, O Lord. Indeed. Have mercy upon us and help us remember. All right. That was Deuteronomy chapter 6 and tomorrow is 7. I love you all. Have a great day. I've got to get ready for work now. Bye.